In chapter 12, we'll be talking about how we measure economic performance. How do we know how our nation is performing? Well, economists base the performance of our nation on three important indicators. One is our output or our productivity. The other is the rate of inflation. And lastly, our business fluctuations. One of the most important measurements of our economy is the gross domestic product. This is how, man, how many products are produced in our country in a single year. And we take uh, the quantity of all the goods and services, multiply that by the prices, and we have three different categories, consumer spending, government spending, and investment. And this is the most important gauge of our economy's strength. We need some definitions to know what's counted in the GDP. First off, it must be a final product. It requires no additions or changes before it's used. So, for instance, a new car would be considered. An intermediate good is not included. So the cars, the tires that are made to go on that car are not a final product. They're an intermediate good, so they are not used in the measurement. And secondhand sales, the sale of used goods, are not included in the GDP because they have previously been counted when they were new products. So uh, other things that are not included would be a, a non-market transaction that there's no receipt um, for. For instance, if you babysit for a neighbor, that's a non-market transaction. They pay you in some type of cash and it's not included. Also, illegal uh, transactions that take place in the underground economy are not included in the GDP. There's nothing to uh, trace this. Here are some limitations of the gross domestic product and its measurement. Only includes those transactions in an organized market. It's not always comparable with other countries. And it also does count public bads, such as natural disasters that might cause billions of dollars in damage, but yet we produce a lot of goods in order um, to uh, repair what's been broken down in a natural disaster. Another measurement that we use is the gross national product. It measures the value of final goods produced by a nation in a given year. Now this is regardless of where the business is located. Net national product is the GMP with uh, depreciation subtracted from it. Here's the difference in the GDP and the GNP. The GDP measures output in a country regardless of who owns the business. So Honda in Lafayette, Indiana is included in our GDP, even though we don't own uh, Honda as an American-owned country. The GMP measures output by residents of a country no matter where they live. So if I live here but I own a business um, in Italy and that money is on my taxes, then that's measured because I'm a resident of the United States. If you look at 12, figure 12.1, 12 page 190 on the book, um, we will have test questions from that figure. Here is that figure, 12.1. It shows that the GMP is smaller than the GDP because we subtract out the money that we have to pay to acquire um, production outside of the United States. Underneath the uh, GMP is also the net national product, national income, and personal income, the total income earned by consumers before paying taxes. Other measurements are transfer payments. These are payments that do not require any goods or services in return. So when we pay people a Social Security benefit every month, that's a transfer payment. There's nothing that they have to do in order to receive this money. Also, disposable income, a definition that you should already know, is the total income that consumers have after paying their personal income taxes. Lesson two is on inflation and how it affects the gross domestic product. Inflation is a rise uh, in prices over time. Deflation is the opposite of that, uh, a drop over time in prices, which is much more rare than inflation. Both can affect the GDP. 
So what we do with the GDP, if we just include inflation, inflation will make it look like we're producing more products when in fact what's happening is that the only thing that's increasing are the prices of the products. Another measurement of inflation is the consumer price index. This is a measurement of monthly uh, goods and services that you and I use on a regular basis and it's uh, it's called it's put into what's called a market basket and there are eight different categories and every month uh, they the government the Bureau of Labor and Statistics will come out with a consumer price index and whether or not it changed from the previous month and we'll talk about this more in class and we'll also do a use this inflation calculator that's on this slide to see how prices have risen and how much the dollar the value of the dollar has fallen here is an idea of what this market basket looks like. Now even though this chart is 11 years old, the percentages, um, or at least the categories, are still true. So this is uh, what they look at when they look at prices. How much is housing? How much is food and drinks? How much does transportation cost? Uh, the average consumer. And then they look at this on a monthly basis. And I'm sure that you from in the past 11 years, which is most of your life, there would be many of these categories percentages that are different than they were back in 03. The producer price index measures what change in prices are paid by producers for their outputs. Also based on a sample, all of these numbers are based on a sample. All of these numbers have a base year and the base year for the PPI is 1982. The implicit GDP price deflator measures price changes in the gross domestic product and it's calculated by the government every three months. Real GDP is really a better indicator than just gross domestic product because this uh, takes out inflation. So real GDP removes inflation and looks at did we really produce any more goods or services. Nominal GDP uh, is an empirically determined gross domestic product, so that's current, like right now. Um, the real D GDP shows what GDP would have been had prices not have changed from the base year. Lesson three is about the business cycle, and we've talked a little bit about the business cycle because we have looked at uh, frictional, structural, and cyclical unemployment and cyclical unemployment is due to fluctuations in the business cycle so now we can put some definitions to what the business cycle uh, looks like. Fluctuations of real GDP are what make up the business cycle and the cycle moves from a trough which is a very low point rises to a boom which is a period of prosperity. Contraction is when real GDP declines and the business activity slows. A recession is when that contraction that we just talked about lasts for six or more months. And we saw that back in 08, 07, 08 with the recession uh, that uh, occurred. Depression is a major slowdown in economic activity. And we have not seen this in our lifetimes, although we've read about the Great Depression and we know what happened during that time period. And expansion is when we're in recovery. So we have been in a downward direction and we're slowly increasing and I would say that we are in an expansionary period right now we're not slowly or we're not quickly rising toward a boom or a trough but at least we are moving upward here's a chart of the business activity and if you look pay particular attention to the red the red uh, is times when things were really really bad so if you look at the Great Depression in um, the 30s you can see that uh, we were producing way, way below what um, our capacity was. And then after the Great Depression, we had a great period of recovery uh, before World War II started, and we, had, uh, we were producing many, many goods and services. Here are five causes of the business cycle of fluctuations. Business decisions, external events, innovation and imitation, government policies, and psychological factors. When we have an economy that is uh, expanding, then businesses expect the sales to uh, increase. So a lot of times businesses will invest in capital goods, they'll 
uh, buy more resources. If we are in fear of a recession or our economy starts slowing down, then businesses immediately start cutting back on their spending. Uh, goods are held in reserved, and sometimes um, this can really make a change in what happens with our GDP. External events are things that we really don't have any um, control over, things like war. Um, maybe a positive would be a discovery of a new oil reserve, or maybe a natural disaster, and this can have uh, a negative or a positive effect on our GDP and the business cycle. New ideas and uh, innovative ideas uh, usually uh, provide a good news for our economy. Uh, it is something that the business cycle uh, increases and would head toward a, a peak or a boom. Government policies can be both good and bad when it comes to the business cycles. If we raise taxes, then it could cause less spending. If we lower taxes, it could create more spending. Uh, so government policies, policies have both a negative and a positive effect. Psychological factors. Maybe someone is just in fear of a war breaking out. Or maybe, uh, on a positive note, there might be something around the corner that would lead to a cure to some horrible disease, and that would uh, bring about a feeling of optimism by consumers. Um, economic indicators, you need to know the definition for. You need to know which uh, of those are really important, such as the gross domestic product. And you need to know the definitions on this page. And there's a chart uh, on the next page that shows what would be under each category. So these are measurements that we use to see uh, how our economy uh, variates and fluctuates. Those leading indicators are what we look the most at, and they are an indicator of what's going to happen in the future with our economy. Uh, I also want to say that there is going to be a pop quiz on um, this uh, video, and some things that you want to know the definition of are CPI, GNP, GDP, real GDP, and transfer payments. So make sure that you know the